one of the first things I like to do is rinse off all the tomatoes once I get them out of the garden, or even after I pick them up from the store, just to make sure all the dirt and stuff is off them. Then I just put them on this little pan, and I get them over next to the cutting board, where I can start cutting them up for the sauce. up this onion. That'll be the first thing uh, for actually getting the sauce going, the sautéing an onion, and then uh, once that's done, I'll put the tomatoes on top. Now one of the things I was thinking about today, um, you know, I was able to spend some time out in the garden. Uh, we're on the weekend right now, so it's not like I would be trading uh, today anyways, but uh, one of the things that's really nice is that, you know, if you think about the average household income being $52,000 and the fact that, you know, that's $1,000 a week. Well, I've been making twenty dollars to $30,000 a month day trading, but even if you're only able to make a fraction of that um, and you're only able to make, say, $1,000 a week, well, you'd be doing it in two hours a day. And, of course, the average household that's making that $52,000 a year, and they're working a full-time 9-to-5 job. Now, you're earning the same amount, let's say, uh, just working two hours a day. The advantage is that you have so much extra time, and for me, I was able to grow all of these tomatoes, uh, you know, with, with that extra time, just growing vegetables in my garden. I can also make some tomato sauce. So when you think about the fact that I work two hours a day, and I'm able to make far more than the average household, and I have all this extra time, which allows me to do things like grow my own vegetables so I can, uh, you know, make my own tomato sauce and, and save a little bit of money. So not only am I making the same amount as someone who's working maybe four or five times as many hours, but during that extra downtime, I can do other things to save money and help reduce my cost of living, right? If I'm able to make 10, 15 cans of tomato sauce, um, you know, over the next couple weeks, that's going to last me all through the winter. Now, although that might not sound like a lot of money uh, in terms of savings, for the average household that's making only $52,000 a year, grocery bills and things like that, utility bills, uh, those all matter. So you'll notice um, a trademark of almost all my clothes is uh, some white paint. And it's because of all my do-it-yourself projects, you know, the painting that I do around the house. I've got a white house. And, you know, and just little fix-up things that I do, painting shelves or whatever it might be. Um, you know, and I think that, again, uh, those are all examples of things that I can do with all this extra time I have to help reduce my cost of living and save money. When I was uh, first up in Vermont, I would cut down trees and chop up my own firewood for the winter. Yeah, it takes maybe, you know, an hour a day, and you do that through most of the summer, but then at the end, you've got... Uh, you know, free heat for the whole winter. How much does it cost most people to heat their home for the winter? You know, $4,000, $5,000 in oil, maybe more. So again, you're talking about the regular household making only $52,000 a year. Now, more of that money goes out to buying groceries because, of course, they're not producing their own food. More of it goes out to paying a premium for things like heating oil because they don't have the time to chop up their own firewood. So one of the things that I like to think about with um, you know, day trading is that this is also a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. We're trading the markets to make uh, to make money, to make our living, and then of course uh, the rest of the day we can focus on other things uh, to help, uh, you know, achieve some measure of independence. And I think that's what uh, we're doing right here today. Growing tomatoes and making some tomato sauce. Alright, so we started with our onions, that's done, the garlic is in, now time to add the tomatoes. Uh, these tomatoes are, you know, kind of a funny shape. Now, one of the things with tomato sauce is that you don't want it to be, like, super watery. And, of course, if it is super watery, you just have to let it cook down for longer. Um, this will definitely take several hours uh, to cook until it's done. But you can make that a little bit faster by uh, not putting in some of the wateriest of the tomatoes or by, um, you know, taking out, you know, some of the seeds and stuff like that and just tossing them aside. So uh, basically I quarter, or, you know, cut them in halves, quarters, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't worry about the, the peels, those, those stay on. 
I don't peel them. Um, any, you know, soft spots or brown spots, I just toss out. So this is probably, I mean, if I had to guess, maybe, I don't know, five to seven pounds of tomatoes, two onions, a few cloves of garlic, uh, and that right there will make, that'll, that'll get this probably at least half full, and that'll fill up several, uh, several freezer bags that I can put in the freezer. Or if I want to do the root of canning, I can do that also. Now the easy thing with uh, putting them in a bag and putting it in the freezer is that, you know, when I want them just for myself, I can just go grab that bag, break it open, throw it in a pan. Uh, if I want to give them to friends and family though, canning is definitely the way to go. It just, you know, presents better than giving someone a Ziploc bag of tomato sauce at Christmas. So I'm just going to chop these up put them in, uh, and you know, that's pretty much it. This will just sit and cook here for maybe three or four hours, let it cook down. I'll keep checking on it and stirring it, but uh, it's pretty much just gonna do its thing here and uh, make the house smell really good, which will be nice. This tomato is a really soft one, so it's nice actually. This would be good just with some olive oil and, and bread, but it's already going in the pot. I've got these cherry tomatoes here. Those ones I'm not going to use for this, I don't think. Um, they're pretty sweet. They're these like light color, kind of mango color cherry tomatoes. And I might add a few, but you know, it depends on the how sweet of a sauce you want. And you all obviously don't want to forget to add um, salt. And I'll probably add some different uh, herbs and stuff like that. These are dried out from the garden, so. Those will go in a little bit later uh, when it's a little closer to being ready. All right, so this is cooking down here. Just gonna let this cook for a while. It smells really good. Um, the pot is about half full and it'll cook down a little bit. I could have I could have filled it up more, but figure, you know, five, seven pounds of tomatoes times, you know, $4 a pound. It's like $30, $40 in tomatoes. This is going to produce a lot of tomato sauce, uh, and it's all uh, free right out of the garden. So there's something really satisfying about that, and it's really cool. One of the things we were mentioning earlier is the fact that um, doing things like this helps reduce your cost of living, and that's really why we're doing this video. You know, hanging out with me, watching me cook in the kitchen. Uh, these are things that I did as a beginner trader. I want to have financial independence. But I knew that my uh, income, the money coming in, would be limited. So I needed to do everything possible to stretch that money as long as I could and as far as I could. That meant doing things like growing my own food, making my own food, uh, cutting my own firewood, painting my own house. All of those things, each of them saved me thousands of dollars a year. And that allowed me to uh, make, th make it through the learning curve without going bankrupt. Right? I reduced my cost of living. It all depends on the lifestyle that you want. If you want to always have a brand new car, if you want to always have uh, you know, new things and lots of fancy things, that's fine. But when you do something like change careers midlife, you have to acknowledge that you're either going to need a good financial buffer to help you go from ending one job to becoming a proficient and profitable trader, or you need to reduce your cost of living. It's really one or the other. Maybe you do a little bit of both. For me, I didn't have the, the means to really keep myself uh, you know, in really good financial condition for a long time when I was learning to trade. So I had to do these things to save money. It was just what I needed to do. And it's now the things that I encourage beginner traders to do if they're in a similar situation that I was in. Right? Do everything you can to save a little bit of money. Uh, it allows you to keep trading, stay in the market. You've got your two hours a day where you're trading and then the rest of the day where you can uh, you know, do other things. Now for me, I spend the rest of the day uh, working with students and teaching the classes and doing that sort of thing. But as a beginner trader, you may find that uh, that time is better spent either having a part-time job or uh, doing things around the house to help you live a more self-sufficient lifestyle. It's all about the steps to financial freedom. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll show you a picture of the tomato sauce when it's done. All right, thanks guys.